Um, I am a technical product manager on the Office 365 team, and I cover identity for Office 365. Um, so I've been working on multi-factor authentication for a little while. Um, and uh, I ha I'll speak for uh, about 55 minutes, and we'll try and leave five minutes at the end just purely for questions. Um, I have the, uh, um, the messaging window open in front of me, so uh, if there's time during the, the talk, um, I'll be answering questions on there as well. Um, but I don't have people uh, answering questions for me, unfortunately, today. So it'll either be while uh, I'm transitioning slides or at the five minutes at the end. Um, we've got uh, uh, some interesting stuff here today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, multi-factor authentication for Office 365, uh, and I'll cover what that is and how you can use it, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. We'll do a demo. Um, and then we'll uh, talk about some of the futures that we have uh, coming up with Office Client to improve how we have uh, multi-factor authentication integrated into Office 365. And then I'll spend a little bit of time talking about uh, Windows Azure multi-factor authentication, uh, where you can get some advanced features for a multi-factor auth um, by adding additional subscriptions there. All right, so let's dive straight into the first section, and we'll be talking about Office 365. And just a brief background on uh, identity management in uh, Office 365. Identity management is about uh, your user directory and how your users sign in, uh, how they look up other users in the address book, um, you know, how they can send emails to people and share documents with other people. We have three models for identity management in Office 365. We have the cloud identity model where users are created in the cloud. They're created in the Office 365 admin portal and they're stored in Windows Azure Active Directory in the cloud. Office 365 uses Azure Active Directory for all identity management purposes. So cloud identity is the first model. The second model is where uh, you run a tool called DuraSync, runs uh, on a server somewhere uh, in your organization, and it will synchronize uh, the directory that you choose, your Active Directory, up into Office 365. So in this model, all of your uh, editing of users is done on premises and we synchronize the user details and we synchronize the hash, a secured hash of the password up into Office 365. And so your users can log on and they can see each other there. The third one is uh, federated identity, which builds on synchronized identity. And uh, federated identity, in addition to synchronizing the users up into Office 365, uh, it actually does the password verification, otherwise known as the authentication. So it does the password verification on premises. And in this model, it's not required to synchronize uh, the hashes of passwords up into Office 365 at all, because the sign-in request is actually handled by on-premises servers. So we have these three different models, and uh, multi-factor authentication is going to work with uh, all of these. Uh, you can use it with all of these, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, what that means and how you can do that moving on. So the second uh, intro piece of uh, identity management in Office 365 um, is that we have uh, a program for testing third-party federated identity providers. Now, I remember we had that third identity model, which is federated identity, where your uh, password is validated by uh, your on-premise system. Well, uh, oftentimes people have an existing identity provider, um, either an alternative to Active Directory or something that they have uh, installed specifically for cloud applications. Um, Microsoft works with these uh, identity provider companies, and uh, uh, we work with them to do testing against Office 365 uh, to make sure that uh, their products work well with Office 365 and all of the authentication scenarios that we have. Uh, and so the works with Office 365 identity program uh, lists identity providers that are qualified and have been tested and that we know work. All right, so moving on, let's talk about uh, multi-factor authentication for Office 365. And uh, the first thing that I wanted to uh, just to, to talk about is that multi-factor authentication is included in uh, all Office 365 SKUs. Um, it is available, and uh, you can set it up and uh, use it with your accounts. Um, so what it means is multiple factors of authentication are required for a user to sign in. Um, and uh, it's familiar to most people from uh, consumer services. Most consumer services have these. Um, and uh, it, is, it, it is simply a way to uh, block password compromises from uh, remote. When you open up your systems for sign-in to anywhere on the internet, 
having a single factor, which is the password, something you know being that password, means that someone can try and guess that password. If you have two factors, then even if someone guesses that password, they have to present the second factor in order to be able to sign in. And so the second factor uh, for our purposes is gonna be something that you have, something uh, typically a phone, and there's some other examples of that on the slide. It's also known as uh, two-factor authentication or strong authentication. Um, it's available with uh, the Microsoft account sign-in, which is separate from the Office 365 org ID sign-in. Um, but uh, that is a, a different implementation of uh, multi-factor authentication. Um, and uh, it, it, it's called multi-factor authentication because there may be two or more factors. Uh, typically, people just use two factors, the, uh, the password that you know and then something that you have. Um, and I've listed a few different types of multi-factor authentication down on the bottom of the screen. There are a number of third-party multi-factor authentication products uh, that implement these different these different types of uh, second factors. Uh, and many of them can be integrated in with uh, ADFS uh, and used in, to, in, in part of a federated identity sign-in scenario. Um, so there's lots of different options that you have there. Um, what we will be, what I'll be talking about today is uh, what we have included in Office 365, um, which is the Windows Azure multi-factor authentication product. Um, this is powered by uh, a company called Phone Factor, which Microsoft acquired in 2012. Um, it already had a large customer base, uh, and it has now been integrated in with uh, Azure Active Directory and available to Office 365 users. So as I mentioned, um, this multi-factor authentication is now included with Office 365. Um, you can read the announcement that we made uh, back on February the 10th. Um, it's included in all Office 365 SKUs uh, for sign-in. Uh, it is uh, not available currently for small business SKUs. Um, so those are the SKUs that uh, are called P1 and P2. It's currently not available with those. Uh, it's also not available, um, whilst I'm pointing that out, with uh, our dedicated SKUs. We have a separate set of products uh, for customers called dedicated SKUs. So multi-factor authentication is not available for those, although those dedicated SKUs um, are able to do custom authentication. Uh, they are custom implementations that go on. Um, so the, what we have included with Office 365, uh, multi-factor authentication for Office 365 um, doesn't replace Windows Azure multi-factor authentication. So at the end of the talk here today, uh, I'll talk about some of the additional features that you get uh, if you subscribe to Windows Azure multi-factor authentication as well. Um, some customers may already be using uh, Windows Azure multi-factor authentication. If you, if you were and you wanted to shift to just the multi-factor authentication for Office 365 feature set, you actually need to uh, stop subscribing to Windows Azure multi-factor authentication. Otherwise, we assume that you want those extra features that are available with that product and uh, your subscription will remain active and, and you'll keep being billed for that. <clears throat> All right. Actually, I just noticed there uh, is a typo on the slide since uh, you're probably reading that. It says admins cannot enable all sign-in users. It should say admins can now enable all sign-in users. Uh, we previously, before February, we had multi-factor authentication available just for admins in some specific scenarios. So we have now enabled it for any user, not just an admin user. Sorry about that. Right, so I want to talk about uh, what um, multi-factor authentication for Office 365 provides. And uh, the second factor, after you've signed in with uh, what we'll now call your account password, um, so after you've entered your account password, um, you uh, uh, have to authenticate also with your phone. Um, this is the this is where the phone factor technology comes from, and they provide. Uh, a, a, the ability to use either a mobile app as a second factor uh, or a phone call or a text message. Um, the phone call is the, the most well-known where uh, you will sign in with your account password, you get that right, and then you'll receive a phone call, and the phone call will ask you if that was you signing in, and it'll ask you to press the pound key on your phone handset if it was, uh, and if it wasn't you, um, you don't press the pound key. 
as soon as you press a pound key, you get signed in. Um, the text messaging is uh, available in two flavors. It can um, it can uh, send you a one-time passcode that you enter, um, and uh, it also has the option to uh, send a text response there. Uh, the mobile apps is the most convenient if you have a smartphone, either a Windows phone, uh, an iPhone, or an Android-based phone. Um, we will send a push notification to uh, the multi-factor authentication app. Um, you can download the multi-factor authentication app as a, as a signed-in user as part of this. You can get access to that. Um, and uh, this can either uh, send a push notification which you acknowledge similar to the phone call, or it can send a uh, one-time passcode similar to the text message uh, where you, you have to type in the passcode. Uh, it doesn't send the passcode. I'm sorry, the passcode cut, it just appears on the phone in the app, and you, you have to type it in um, when you're prompted to. Hey, we have a question here. Um, are solo plans like Exchange Online Plan 1, 2 uh, included in Office 365? Um, yes, they are. Um, one thing that's interesting here about uh, using a phone call or, in fact, a push notification with a mobile app is we can do what's uh, what's referred to as an out-of-band call. So if you're using this technology, um, which would be Windows Azure multi-factor authentication with another app, maybe an application that you've built, um, you don't have to retrofit that app in order to have the one-time passcode uh, filled in. You can, uh, you can actually implement multi-factor authentication without changing your sign-in screen because actually the only thing that happens is your sign-in is delayed whilst you acknowledge either the phone call or the smartphone app. Um, so that's a handy hint there if you are implementing an app and wanted to make use of that. Office 365 does show custom UX uh, whilst you're going through that, so it'll show you the status. Um, but that's what we mean by an out-of-band call. It means that uh, your, uh, your existing UX and your existing password doesn't need to change. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, a little bit of what it looks like. Uh, and there's going to be two parts of the UX that I'll show today. Uh, one is what the administrator sees when uh, they actually go and configure a user and set them up for multi-factor authentication. So I'll walk you through that. The second is, and what you're looking at now, uh, is what the user sees. Um, so the user obviously interacts with multi-factor authentication when they have to sign in. Um, the user can also configure their uh, second factor, um, which is what this screen is here. Uh, and you can see the five different options that you have. Let's walk through those. You can call me on my mobile phone, text a code to my mobile phone, call me on my office phone, notify me through an app or show a one-time code in an app. Uh, and you choose what your preferred option is there. Um, you can actually set up multiple of those uh, in the screen. You can see the checkboxes next to uh, uh, phone call or text message and mobile app down the bottom. Um, and if you set up multiple of these, uh, when you sign in, you're actually able to uh, select which one that you have. Um, so I quite often uh, set uh, mobile phone uh, and mobile app and office phone um, sometimes I'll just take the call on my office phone. It's sitting there on my desk, and I just hit the hash key and hang up. Um, other times I'll uh, I'll pull my smartphone out of my pocket and uh, acknowledge on the app. And I get to choose that when I'm uh, signing on. So this is the screen. We'll take a look at this uh, in the demo just in a moment. And this is the second part of the UX, and the second part of the end user UX is something that we call app passwords. Now, we need app passwords because um, not all of uh, the uh, clients associated with Office 365 are able to uh, make use of uh, the second factor of authentication. Um, some of our clients, notably uh, rich clients, uh, Outlook, Link, um, and other apps, such as the OneDrive for Business Sync app, um, do not support um, the second factor for sign-in at this time. So what we do in lieu of that, if uh, a user is configured for multi-factor authentication, um, is that uh, when they want to sign in for those uh, on those clients, they're required to use an app password. An app password is not a password that the user can select. Um, it is always 16 characters. 16 characters is the maximum length for password, uh, and it's always randomly generated. Uh, is only shown to the user one time. And so it's intended that you copy this, the user copy this to the clipboard and then paste it into the password box uh, for the app that they're configuring. And users can create up to 40 of these uh, and assign them labels. The label 
um, can uh, can indicate the name of the app that they've created it for. Um, and this provides you uh, a stronger password than users would otherwise type in. Um, it's also difficult for them to remember. Uh, if desired, administrators can disable the use of uh, app passwords when they configure multi-factor authentication. All right, so that's the second part of the UX that end users see. All right, so let's take a look at uh, this uh, as you will see it in Office 365. Um, so what I'm going to walk through is uh, first off the admin enabling a user for multi-factor authentication. And then I'll show what we call proof up, which is the first time that user comes to sign in at Office 365. Um, we prompt them to add their second factor. Um, and then we'll sign in as that user with the second factor. And then I'll show you the end user UX where you can um, change that second factor. All right, so I'll switch over to sharing. And uh, Nanette, I'm going to ask you to uh, let me know when you can see this screen. OK, we'll do. It's just loading right now. And let's see, I have a question while I'm waiting for that. Uh, will app passwords expire according to the password expiration policies? No. Uh, app passwords don't expire um, like uh, regular passwords. They're not subject to policies of regular passwords. Um, they are only removed when either the user or the user's administrator uh, deletes them. All right, someone says uh, they can see me. I uh, assume you mean the, the, my screen. Uh, so we'll carry on. All right, so you're looking at uh, my admin console for uh, my uh, uh, tenant that I have. Um, and uh, we can see that there's no, no service issues right now, which is awesome. Uh, so I'm going to go down into uh, users and groups. I'll click on users and groups. Um, and this is where we configure our users. You can see I've got a bunch of test users, some conference rooms, etc. Uh, you can set up uh, uh, directory synchronization and federation here. And then we have set multi-factor authentication requirements. So I'm not going to do anything in the screen. I'm just going to go straight into set multi-factor authentication requirements. And uh, you'll see this in uh, all of the, uh, uh, the eSKU admin consoles. Um, all right, so here is the multi-factor authentication configuration screen. You will notice that it does show uh, the list of users again, just like in the users and groups. Um, but uh, this is where you configure specifically all the things related to multi-factor authentication. Um, you have to select which users you're working with. And by default, it uh, shows your global administrators. Uh, global administrators are most likely people that you will want to enable for multi-factor auth. Um, I'm going to go and set uh, all sign in allowed users. You can see the other groups of administrators there. You can also select um, the multi factor auth status. Uh, so you could say, hey, I just want to look at a list of the users who are uh, enabled or who are enforced or all of them. So let's talk about enabled and enforced. Um, I'm going to go in and enable a new user, this guy, Aaron Andrew, here. And uh, uh, I'm going to enable him for multi-factor authentication. So we'll set him to enabled. And when I enable that, um, he is able to use multi-factor authentication. And uh, he's, he's actually going to be asked to proof up and set that the next time he signs on to a web application. Um, one, when he's enabled, we're actually going to allow Aaron to continue using his client apps that would require an app password um, with his regular account password. So we'll set enable, um, and there's a deployment guide I can go and read, um, and we'll do that. So at this point, Aaron uh, can't sign in on uh, to to um, either SharePoint Online or Exchange Web Access with his account password alone. He's required to use a second factor. He can still sign in to his rich client apps, just to, to uh, reinforce that point there. Um, he doesn't have to use the app password until he's actually enforced. You can see that Arn is sent to enabled, and some of these other users are set to enforced. Enforced means they cannot use just the account password on their rich client apps. All right, so we're set with Aaron. He's all set up. Let me uh, briefly show you the other user settings we have here. Um, we can require him to provide contact methods again. Um, you're going to see this in proof up where we have to add our contact methods for the second factor. 
You can also delete all his app passwords that he's done. So we won't do that just now. I'll go and sign out, and then I'm going to come back in as Arn. All right, and I'm just typing in his account password here and signing in like normal. And this is the first time that he's been enabled for multi-factor auth. So it tells him your admin has required that you set up this account for additional security verification, uh, and you can uh, choose to set it up now. You don't actually have any other option other than to uh, sign out at this point. So we'll go and set that up. All right, and here's the screen uh, where we're doing our proof up. And in proof up, uh, I'd actually like to use my mobile app. So uh, I go and configure my mobile app. You can go and get the multi-factor auth app from your device's app marketplace. Again, we support uh, Windows Phone, iPhone, and uh, Android. Um, you're not going to see my, uh, my phone screen today, unfortunately. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm just going in and uh, clicking on the uh, 2D barcode scanner that's in multi-factor auth app and uh, it's activating my account now. And the app now shows me a six digit code and that tells me that's done, so I can click done there. And now it's checking uh, with my phone that it is activated. And so we'll wait while that happens. Okay, mobile app has been configured. So now my mobile app is ready. Uh, I'll just set it on the desk there, and we'll carry on. There's a couple more things that it asked me to do. Um, it's going to do uh, verify, um, which means I'm going to see a pop-up on my phone. All right, there's my pop-up, and I'll just tap on verify. I see the option to verify or cancel, and I've hit verify. All right, so we're all saved and uh, we're ready to go with that. My app is ready to act as my uh, second factor on my phone. Um, and any time I get that, I'll get a, uh, a push notification, um, a push notification to my phone and ask to verify again. I'm seeing a few people say that they uh, can't see the, the uh, presentation anymore. Is, someone able, is anyone able to, show, to, to see that? Or is that? Is that something that I should really share? Yeah, I think... Um... I most, okay, tons of people can see it there. We're yeah, good. Most folks can see it. All right. I, I think, Nanette, is the, the instruction, if, if it's not working, you have the option of dropping out and then coming, rejoining. That does options. actually work pretty well. Um, it also, when you um, adjust from a slide presentation to a demo like this, it does some, take some time to load sure. uh, on their end, so uh, depending on the speed of their internet and that kind of thing. But um, Please feel free to go ahead and, and drop and rejoin. If you get ad, ad, admitted into a lobby, I'll, of course, let you in. So, All right, so let's move on here. Um, now, in addition to the app, uh, it wants to know my mobile phone number just in case I lose access to my app. Um, so we'll let it have 425-555-1234 just for now. Um, and then it's telling me about these app passwords. Now, I've talked to you about these app passwords already. Um, so there's some instructions here, there's a learn more link, um, and we have the option to not use them or to generate one. So I'll generate one, here it is, NSD, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and copy it to the clipboard, and uh, uh, I can create a number of those or I can, I can just be done. I'm going to be done for now. All right, so now it is uh, signing me in after doing that, and I've just seen a pop-up on my screen so we'll hit verify and let's see if it lets me in all right let me in so now i'm signed in as the user uh, who's been signed in with multi-factor auth um, and by the way because i've done that proof up i'll now be set to enforced rather than enabled in the uh, in the admin screen, so I will have to use an app password if I use a rich client at this point. Um, I want to go in and uh, uh, look at my uh, options here. Uh, I want to show you in these options uh, where you can change those uh, settings for multi-factor auth. So as a regular user, I go into this options. This is options about my, um, my uh, account. Um, Actually, in Outlook options, how did that happen? Office 365 settings. 
let's try that. Okay, so I got into Office 365 settings again. That's in the cog um, rather than your Outlook options. And I'm going to go to additional security verification. So click on that and go on this link as well. Update my phone numbers used for account security. And now you'll see the now familiar screen, additional security verification. Uh, and you can see it's set just the way that I set it up. Um, I can add other phone numbers. Um, I can reconfigure the app if I've lost it. I can tell it my preferred option, which it's going to try uh, right up. And uh, I can also go in and look at my uh, app passwords. So here um, you can see this one's just called initial app password. I can go and create another one and I'll say maybe this is for link and I'm going to use this password in link. And it generates a new password um, and uh, that's the password starting with WB. I can copy that to the clipboard and I can close it. I can't see that password again, um, but I can delete it uh, and recreate another one. All right, so uh, this is how we uh, configure our uh, second factor um, after we have been uh, uh, set up as a user. Um, and so any other time as I if I sign in as this guy, I can put in the account password, and that gets me straight to the to the uh, mobile app coming up. <clears throat> All right, so that's the end of uh, what I wanted to show on that first demo. <clears throat> Let me jump up here just and quickly take a look at uh, questions whilst we are switching back to the PowerPoint. Uh, if using app, where's the multi-factor? So the second factor, if using the mobile app, is actually your phone. Uh, the second factor is having to have the phone with you. The first factor is the password that you know. Um, question from Vivek, the app is the second factor. Hey, that's an answer. Um, let's see. Darden wasn't able to get the presentation. Um, hopefully you can get the slides back, or you can check the recording here. It appears there are basically two passwords. PSP, it appears there are basically two passwords. Uh, there are, in fact, multiple passwords. There is an account password, which is the original password that you have, and that's the first factor of authentication. And then uh, if you are using multi-factor auth, so you're on the web login, which supports the second factor, then the second factor is not a password. It is uh, the phone that you have, and you have to have possession of the phone. If uh, if you are not on a web login, so you're not on OWA or um, or SharePoint Online, if you're using one of the client apps, then you can't use multi-factor authentication. Instead, you have to use app passwords. So you could say that's a second password. You don't type in your account password um, when you do that. Um, what what you type in instead is the app password. Um, hey, Scott's asking for a demo of that. Actually, I think we might have time to do that uh, if folks are interested. Uh, I can show that. Let me uh, oh, I I might be able to show that. Let me take a look. Uh, what I can do, um, I'm going to do this with Outlook. So we're going to switch. One second here. All right, so I can actually uh, – how about we take an unprepared demo? Is that a good idea? Add account. All right, <clears throat> so it seems like there is uh, some interest in taking a look at this, so we'll go – Switch back over to screen sharing. Now, this is going to take a moment to come up. Uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to add in a new account into uh, my existing Outlook. Um, and this new account is going to be ARN. And ARN requires a second factor. So then I'm going to go and get that. So you'll see exactly what has to happen there. So the app password is the only password that I'll be using. Hopefully, I've given enough time and the, the sharing has come up again. 
Is anyone seeing the sharing there? I can see it. Thanks, yeah. Annette. All right, so we'll put in my uh, email address, RNA, and then I have to put in an app password here as this password. So I don't have an app password that I can remember right now. So as Arn, uh, I'm just going to go and get one. So we'll go into Office 365 settings, go into additional security verification, update my phone numbers, app passwords, and then I'm going to say create, and this one is for Outlook. I'll copy that password to the clipboard. It starts DF at 16 characters long. We allow access because we're coming from the browser. And then we'll switch back to Outlook. And Outlook has to have my password in here. And so now all I've put in is my account name, uh, my UPN, and my app password. And we'll be adding this account. And so let's just wait here for a moment to see that that works. Uh, meanwhile, are there any questions? It looks like someone's answering my questions for me, which is fantastic. How does this affect uh, SSO? Um, so you can actually configure. Uh, you can see that that's worked now, so I'll stop. I'll stop that sharing. You can you can actually use this with uh, single sign-on. Um, if you remember at the start of the talk, I talked about the three different identity authentication models that we have. The third one being federation and uh, multi-factor auth works with all three of those. Uh, if you enable the Office 365 multi-factor auth um, on uh, an account that is used uses uh, federated sign-in, um, then uh, the second factor will be requested after the account password is validated on SSO. Um, so once your SSO uh, account password is validated in whatever way that it is validated, then the second factor is going to be prompted for. All right, let's get back to our presentation here. All right, so uh, Federated uses is one of the items that I wanted to talk about. Um, and in fact, there's another thing that uh, you have to be careful with if you are setting up Federation. Um, more, uh, more times than you would care to imagine, um, I have had a customer who has configured multi-factor authentication in Office 365 and also configured it uh, in, uh, in an add-on to ADFS. And they end up with, um, with uh, users being prompted for their account password and then a second factor and then another second factor of authentication. Um, so if you are using the Office 365 multi-factor authentication, that will prompt for a second factor after all of the single sign-on uh, work is completed after all of the uh, federated auth is done. And uh, so if, if part of your federated auth also includes multi-factor authentication, then that's going to result in two of them. You just have to choose whether you do multi-factor auth on-premise in your federated identity provider or in the cloud. Um, it's definitely not recommended to do it in both places. Um, app password for uh, administrator. Uh, we. Uh, we have actually been able to support uh, app passwords for administrator now. Uh, it uh, was not supported um, when we uh, first came out with this, so it's been very, very recently added. Um, we don't, however, enable uh, PowerShell for accounts that are configured for uh, app password. Um, so if you have, or in fact, just multi-factor authentication. So PowerShell is not available. Um, if uh, you, uh, we recommend for using PowerShell that you create a service account, um, which is uh, an administrator account, and you control access to that service account purely for times when your administrators are uh, required to do PowerShell work. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, some of the futures that are coming up. Um, and uh, we have uh, work that is going on right now on the Office 2013 clients uh, that I'm able to share with you. And this work is planned for uh, being complete within the calendar year, so sometime towards the end of this year. Um, what we're doing is uh, um, adding in um, a, a library called the uh, Active Directory um, Authentication Library into the Office clients. Uh, and this library um, is able to uh, essentially make the Office clients do the same kind of sign-in as our web browsers. Uh, this is what we call passive auth. 
Um, so anything that you can sign in from uh, a web-based Office 365 application, so SharePoint Online or Outlook Web Access, you'll be able to sign in in the same way uh, from an Office 2013 client application. And this, of course, means that you'll be able to do regular multi-factor authentication from these client applications. It also means we'll be able to support uh, a variety of different auth protocols um, that today only work with uh, web browser auth, including uh, SAML P-based identity providers, um, uh, uh, Department of Defense Common Access Card, and the US Federal Personal Identif Identity Verification Card, uh, known as PIV. So these are uh, these US uh, standard identity cards are uh, implemented with uh, add-ons to ADFS, um, and uh, this new improvement to Office 2013 will enable us to do those uh, with those clients. Thank you, Scott. SkyDrive Pro should absolutely be uh, OneDrive for business. All right, so I want to show you just uh, what this might look like, and I'm going to switch. I have to apologize now. I'm going to switch back to uh, screen sharing. All right, so what I'm going to show you is uh, a prototype that we've been working on. Um, someone will have to let me know in the message window when uh, the screen sharing has started to come up. Um, but this is a, a prototype uh, of Outlook, and you're actually going to see the same as what I did with my app password. You're going to say that, see that same flow of setting up a new account. Um, and uh, this time we're going to do it with the new prototype of the Office 2013 client updates. And so I just want to let you know what you're going to see before I run it because it's it's pretty quick. But you're going to see um, the uh, default browser for the machine, which in this case is IE. Um, and you're going to see IE come up and ask for uh, authentication. Um, and uh, so because we do it through the default browser, uh, some of those uh, federated identity providers can redirect you to different screens. They can show different things on there. So this is the browser. Um, and the username password is being put in. Um, because it's the browser, it's actually also the password is entered directly. In, and you, now you can, I've got to talk really quick. Now you can see the, the code is being entered that's been texted to the account. All right, it's basically over now. <laughs> so we saw, maybe we'll watch that again so I can talk about it, I don't know. But what, what we basically saw is um, uh, we made a request up to uh, this identity provider, and the identity provider requests the password. So Office 365 doesn't need to request the password. This is a federated sign-in. And then the federated identity provider can show additional screens as required. It could do the proof up. In this case, it's just asking you for your sign-in, uh, for your token that you've got off your text message, and then you're signed in. All right. Switch back. Switching back to slides now. So a little bit of detail on what we're doing here. We're using the Active Directory Authentication Library, um, and we're using that inside of uh, the Office 2013 clients. This is an existing library that Microsoft has uh, published today, and uh, it uh, is able to make use of um, browser-based authentication. Uh, it, it encapsulates these requests in the uh, OAuth protocol, um, and uh, it does uh, communications across these identity providers, which I'll show on the next slide, Yep. Uh, in order to uh, sign you in. Um, so we're able to support uh, various different OAuth protocols, SAML P2.0, WSFed, um, as required by the identity providers that are validating the password. Um, of course, the identity provider could also be uh, Azure AD, so you could still be using um, sign-in directly to uh, your passwords, hashes that are synchronized up to Azure AD, and you'll be able to do multi-factor auth uh, from Azure AD as well. So here's the flow that we uh, we go through with this. Uh, and so the first thing that happens is that, that um, the Office application uh, we'll make a request to Office 365, and uh, the uh, request will have some information uh, that comes back to the web browser, um, and the ADAL library will uh, uh, will launch.
launch the web browser um, and make the request to Azure Active Directory. Um, and in this case, it's a federated sign-in using either SAMLP or WSFED. And because it's federated, it's going to go to the federated security token service. If it wasn't federated, then Azure Active Directory would show uh, the web pages for sign-in back to the web browser. Uh, because this case is federated, uh, we're then going to validate the assertions that come back from the security token service, and we get this JWT token inside of the OAuth protocol, and we're going to send that up to Office 365, and Office 365 trusts that token uh, and will enable you to be signed in. All right, so that's what we're planning. Um, this will require an update to the um, Office 2013 client applications, um, but it will enable you to, uh, in almost all cases, remove the need for app passwords. There still may be some applications which uh, take a little bit longer. Uh, think of... Uh, apps that are uh, shipped with cell phones or other things that are reliant on uh, uh, ActiveSync may take longer to uh, make use of the um, Active Directory application library. But in most cases, this will allow you to upgrade your clients uh, and get two-factor auth or um, other types of authentication directly inside of those clients. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, Windows Azure multi-factor authentication. Uh, because there are uh, diff essentially different licenses where you can make use of multi-factor authentication here. Multi-factor authentication for Office 365 is what I've been talking about primarily today. It's included in the Office 365 SKUs. I've walked you through all of the UX for the admins um, and for the users for that. Um, it enables you to secure Office 365 resources for any user. Um, and uh, we currently don't have uh, a bit available for users on small business SKUs. There is a, a second, there, there's two other uh, flavors of multi-factor authentication that you can get. There's multi-factor authentication for Azure administrators, and this is unrelated to Office 365. It's included in a Windows Azure subscription, uh, and it secures Azure resources for administrators. So there's essentially no charge for you to use multi-factor authentication with administrative accounts for uh, Windows Azure. The third one, Windows Azure Multi-Factor Authentication, uh, is a paid license um, which enables advanced features for both Office 365 and Azure subscriptions. Uh, and I have uh, more details on what those features are on the next slide. Um, it also uh, enables securing not only Office 365 and Windows Azure, the Microsoft products, but also uh, third-party SaaS applications or applications that uh, you develop yourself. Um, and it uh, enables you to secure resources that are on-premises. Uh, it has a uh, MFA server, which can be used on-premises and can be used for second-factor authentication for on-premises applications as well as in the cloud. Uh, and um, it, uh, um, in some of these, uh, so I want to talk to you about uh, these additional features uh, many of which require the Azure MFA portal. Uh, you don't get access to the Azure MFA portal just with the first two here, multi-factor authentication for Office 365 or multi-factor authentication for Azure administrators. Um, you're required to have the Windows Azure multi-factor authentication license to get access to the Azure MFA portal. Um, so switching over here, we'll take a look at uh, some of the additional features that you can configure in that multi-factor authentication portal. Let's take a question here. Uh, it says, is it available for Office 365 EOP customers that are using on-premises exchange? And this question is regarding multi-factor for admins. Uh, so I think the answer there is that it is not going to be um, because you don't get any on-premises uh, second factor auth support uh, unless you get multi-factor authentication, uh, the Windows Azure multi-factor authentication because you're going to be required to have that uh, on-premises multi-factor authentication server, which is only available with that extra license. So you can have a look down our checkboxes here. Uh, administrators are included everywhere. Uh, use of mobile app, use of phone call, use of SMS, app passwords for non-browser clients, uh, default Microsoft greetings during authentication phone calls. Uh, we didn't talk about that, but that is uh, what the phone call speaks to you and asks you to press the pound key when uh, you're authenticated. So these are the, the features here on the chart that are included in multi-factor authentication for Office 365. These additional ones are part of Windows Azure multi-factor authentication. You can customize the greetings for your company. Uh, you can get a fraud alert 
reports, uh, which report back to your administrators, um, which is generated when a user receives a prompt to verify that they're signing in when they're actually not signing in. Um, you can get event confirmation and other security reports. Uh, you can block and unblock users um, from their second factor directly. Um, you have a opportunity for a one-time bypass. This means that the next sign-in for a particular user does not require their second factor. So as an administrator, you can disable this one time or each time the user signs in if they want to call you uh, and, and negotiate that with you. Um, you can customize the caller ID for the authentication phone calls and text messages. Um, we do actually send these from uh, uh, points all around the world so that uh, you're, uh, in most cases, not charged for international uh, phone train, phone fees. Um, and uh, you can actually customize the caller ID uh, if you have the uh, Azure Multifactor Authentication SKU. The MFA server, which is downloadable from the uh, MFA portal, again, part of that SKU, and it's usable when you have the license uh, from Azure, and the MFA SDK for building uh, custom apps that integrate with uh, Azure MFA directly. So all of those are part of that other SKU. That other SKU is uh, either licensed per uh, user that is uh, uh, switched on for multi-factor auth or per authentication. There's two ways of licensing that, uh, and you want to talk to uh, your Microsoft account manager or licensing person to learn more about that. All right, so a little bit of information here about uh, the different things that Windows Azure multi-factor authentication enables. Um, because this has uh, some additional functionality over uh, Office 365 multi-factor authentication, um, we have some similar things here, uh, but we also have the on-premises apps, um, which can authenticate you against the multi-factor authentication server. And you can integrate that with uh, cloud-based multi-factor authentication um, so that you can enable all users in all scenarios um, to be authenticated in the same way. Uh, and you can also uh, um, authenticate cloud-based apps. Um, you can see the example here, the cloud-based apps are being authenticated using federated sign-in with SAML into the on-premises multi-factor authentication server. Um, and it will take care of making sure that your, uh, your cloud users are not authenticated, uh, second-factor authenticated twice in that scenario. All right, so that's the end of the talk that I have today on multi